Hello everyone and welcome back to another uh, One Piece discussion and uh, we haven't done this in about a month so I thought I'd actually <laughs> discuss a chapter that had a lot of information that got thrown at us um, and uh, kind of a lot of information that wasn't there that uh, I was kind of hoping for um, and uh, you know, we'll get into it uh, in a little bit, but not it, there was a there was a couple moments where I, I think Oda could have definitely had some transitional shots that could have uh, helped the backstory, and I I think that we might be getting a longer backstory at some point, and that he's just not giving us all this information um, because of this maybe, but uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> anyways, without further ado, uh, chapter one thousand forty nine. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, a pretty great chapter in the way that it finally <laughs> put an end to this um, perpetual hell that we've been in with how long this arc has been. Um, I know that like a lot of people have said that this arc is really great and it's this and that and they just wank it off all they want and like it is a good arc. You know I think it's a I would even say it's a great arc, you know, especially the raid itself. There's been a lot of build-up for this. A lot of build-up for this uh, one punch. Um, <clears throat> I, I kind of... I'm kind of lost for words on that, too. I think it's bizarre that he brought up Ryu. Luffy brought up Ryu when, right before he punched Kaido. When in reality, it didn't mean anything. All the, it, he literally just slammed him into the ground. With one punch. I mean, <laughs> I can't be the only person that thinks that's crazy. But he did the same thing that he did against Doflamingo. Like, I, I don't understand that. <sighs> what I think is very frustrating to me is that it was a great chapter. I was smiling the whole time, but I cannot believe that we... A, a Yonko, nonetheless, a man that was compared to Whitebeard, was taken out the same way that Doflamingo was taken out. In every villain. You know, and this is where One Piece is having a hard time connecting with some people, I think. It's just that it is too form formulaic. We go to an island, it becomes a problem, there's a villain, and he gets hit in one hit every time. And what's interesting is it can be done effectively. Like with Anel... I think that was done very well. But I think in this scenario, I think what would have worked a little bit better is if Luffy did what he did against Lucci and somebody had told him, like, hey, get up, get up. And I think even more so, this is where... I didn't make a video about it when it happened, but I really didn't like Luffy's Gear 5th uh, in retrospect. I think his abilities were fun and, you know, gimmicky. And they were creative, very creative, which is something I liked. But I wish that he used them against Blackbeard for the first time. Because this seemed like a, like an all-out brawl fight. Like he was just going to do some Gatling or, or something of some sort. And if he did use Awakening, I wish he made the roof rubber and then he bounced him off the top of the roof and then hit him one more time right as Momo moved it. And then he slammed him. Like, that would have been pretty awesome. Um, so I guess I'm just a little disappointed on my own expectations on the way I thought this f battle was going to go out. Because it didn't really satisfy me at all. In fact, I was a little confused on what was going on. But it was a very deserving punch. Cause, and it's pretty crazy to see Kaido that vulnerable. He still doesn't wasn't bleeding he still wasn't like you know he just looked knocked out so i kind of my dream scenario is that big mom gets up you know maybe she tries to you know during during when they're all celebrating and then kyo just hits her over the head and it's like hey you know mugiwara like i got you like you know he's like because he's cool with luffy or something and just says like hey you know we just tried to kill each other but you know and I, I think you are Joy Boy or something. Like, I don't know. Something like that would be kind of nice. However, with that, uh, uh, I guess the negative, the rant part out of the way, um, I think Kaido's backstory itself was really good. Like, 
we're getting to the meat of what makes this man for the most part and we've we've seen his backstory actually sprinkled throughout um in the introduction to kaido we know that he was captured uh i don't remember he was, i think he was captured 11 times he was, he was sent to be executed like seven times or something, something like that so we knew a little bit about his rough backstory and and what what kind of a man he was when he first met kid and ever and you know he crash land on that island um and kaido we we know that he had his some of his backstory as a younger man through the odin stuff you know through what greco mori was saying um you know through 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 yamato's eyes as a young child through odin's eyes so we've seen it all from other people's perspectives you know he has been in big mom's you know not backstory but you know, vice versa, they've been in there. Um, and I really think it was a powerful moment when we get to see his life and he was just like a, a, a young boy and he was just like, like always just want, he always wanted to fight. You know, he was just a young boy that was in a poor country that just wanted to fight. And he was just taking people out left and right. No one, no one could stand in Kaido's way at this point as a young child. And I, I just love that this just you know innocence this this level of of like just just pure joy from this character that we always see him depressed and angry you know then we of course later see in the flashback you know and of course it's the vodka kingdom like of course man of course it was the vodka kingdom that is such an oda thing to pull a man who, who loves to drink constantly and is drinking and is drunk all the time. Translations on Sunday might, of course, throw a wrench in this whole thing. Um, the official translation, that is. But I, I think that if it stands, the Vodka Kingdom is a pretty hilarious uh, thing. Maybe that's actually why where, where he started drinking. Or, you know, maybe not. We already know why he drinks. But maybe that's why, like, where he picked it up from, I guess. Uh, he was a young soldier that we found out. Uh, it kind of skips, you know, two years. I love how this idea of forcing people to be Marines, right? I mean, it, it makes sense because drafts in the world exist. But I think it's interesting that both Big Mom and Kaido were almost going to be forced to join the Marines. And just how much of a difference that would have made uh, really for uh, the Marines as as a whole Uh they would have been a whole hell of a lot stronger, obviously, if they had uh, Kaido and Big Mom. But maybe they wouldn't have been stronger. Um, we, don't, we don't know. But Kaido just says, like, w -w -w what the hell do you think? And that's where I think where maybe the betrayal comes in. Because remember, pirates always betray pirates. Like, we still don't know why that's the case. Um, I still think that has to do with Rox and his disgraceful defeat. Maybe it has something to do with it. Maybe Rox killed himself. You know, I think that's definitely a plausibility that's that's happening. Um, but what I think is interesting is that Kaido recognizes that this is the betrayal that the humans did, right? And the king is probably a human. This is where he was saying that humans betray humans. This is what he told Yamato, right? I don't know why... This is so bizarre. Why was he an Oni? Why was he the only Oni on Vodka Kingdom? Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't see anyone else with horns. So I don't know if ev everyone is an Oni there, or certain people. But they were trying to join the Reverie, so maybe they were. Maybe there was some Oni. You know, I, I, it's just really bizarre to me. It's like the Third Island Tribe or the Long Arm Tribe or the or the uh, Long Leg Tribe. You know, they seem to be all over the place. When it seems like the government would have hunted them down by now. But, you know, that's a video for another time, I guess. Um, but yeah, Kaido is, is, is you know, as a young man, just, just is having a $70 million bounty. And then he's just busts. He's just, you know, presumably doing what Kid used to do. And just terrorizing towns and fighting whoever he wants to fight. And then just getting captured whenever he's hungry. That is such a Kaido thing. That is such an awesome thing. Um, that that really, it, I I love that. I just I adore that. The fact that that's like one of the coolest things is he's just getting captured. That's that's even a Luffy thing, just to get captured, just to get food. To be honest, 
Um, you know, Kaido definitely changed over the years as a man. You know, we all do, so you can't blame his personality too much, you know, especially if, you know, you drink as much as Kaido does. Um, but then after that, you know, he meets Whitebeard, you know, on, of course, Pirate Island. And I think he wanted to replicate that, you know, especially with an eye, you know, Onigashima had it was it looked like a skull. So it, it was probably similar to what, you know, lit, full of lead island or beehive island or whatever you want to call it. You know, the island that we saw Blackbeard at, you know, I think he wanted to replicate that with Onigashima being on top of Wano. I don't know why he didn't just take over full of lead island. Or move that over here, but I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I there's there's a lot of things I don't know at this point. Um, you know, and it, it's it's kind of cool to see. I was not expecting Whitebeard to have a mustache. I don't know if you guys were the only ones. You know, if, if I was the only one, maybe, but I, I wasn't expecting him to have a mustache. But it's just really cool to see. You know, Edward Newgate. You know, at this point, I don't even think. I guess he's considered Whitebeard at this point, but it's it is a little weird. Uh, it's kind of jarring that he's like trying to recruit people for not his crew but Rox's crew, and the look on his face is kind of like he I, I don't know he, if he has admiration or if maybe he just owes him you know Rox something. But it's interesting one way or another. He's like, Do you want to be a pirate? And so he joins the Rox crew, and then immediately, immediately we cut, and this is. <sighs> This is a very, I understand why it was cut, because there is something intrinsically linked to God's Valley that we're not, you know, privy to yet. You know, I don't know if it's something to do with the Celestial Dragons, or something that was taboo that, you know, the, the rocks found out on the island, or, you know, whatever that was important uh was isn't shouldn't be brought up right now which is fine i understand that i'm not dumb but what i think is bizarre to me is the transition because it's like hey you want to join rocks and then boom like we did the transition shot into like the next panel is like oh rocks have been defeated like okay like that's weird um you know and then there's this the, this panel with big mom and she's like hi doll where'd you go like so i don't know maybe Maybe Kaido just said, screw everyone, you know, and I think Big Mom expected Kaido and her to go after the One Piece together after she gave him that devil fruit, and that's probably why she was pretty pissed off at Kaido for a number of years. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that, you know. I, I Man, I would love to have a prequel series with just rocks. Um, it's cool that he also uh, recognizes, like, oh, the remnants of rocks are going to be making a name for themselves for a long time. And this is another weird one. Um, Higurashi actually shows up. I don't, I don't know where this is. If it's on a, a oh, oh yeah. By the way, kind of going backwards a little bit, but we actually got to see Rox's ship, presumably, in the back of it. And I'd like to point out that the back of the ship actually has these, um, uh, you know, like candles, but also the, the shape of the sh back of the ship. And it also has like these uh, like prison holder things. And that's it, it looks exactly like uh, the uh, Marshall Marshall D. Teach uh, Blackbeard character, uh, you know, in real life or Marshall Teach character in uh, real life. And so I thought it was kind of cool that uh, their shi the ship looks similar to uh, Blackbeard's ship in real life. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, Higurashi actually, like, mentions to Kaido, like, oh, the, the strong, you know, are the ones that, you know, by force, you know, are the ones that change the world, which I thought was really cool. But what I thought was really bizarre and jarring again was, like, wait, 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 wait. I thought Kaido was going to Wano already, so maybe Higurashi didn't know he was already going to Wano and was like, hey, I'll make you a deal, or vice versa. Maybe maybe that was just a good way, <coughs> sorry, um, a good way of him getting there. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me because I thought that Kaido was already going to go to Wano, but I think he just took advantage of the situation. Also, like, Higurashi going off and on a Wano seems pretty bizarre. 
And now that I think about it, the elevator in Wana was never really uh, addressed, and we never even saw it function, so that's a little strange. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's a, there was supposed to be a point to that that didn't get addressed. Um, and it, it's it's really kind of sad when I think it's a little bit sad, anyways, when you get to actually look at Kaido when he said to King, and he was like. Oh, like, you're waiting for Joy Boy too, like, you know, King. Um, there's something that, you, you know, you should uh, know about. Um, I, Joy Boy uh, is, you know, the person that's going to defeat me. And then King's like, oh, like, that'll ever happen. <laughs> and, you know, it just so happens that Luffy is a one of the Joy Boys that have existed in the world and throughout the world's history and that's that's just really cool i think but really kind of sad that yeah that their that their ambitions change so much throughout the years king and kaidos and you know really that you know he he was you know he he for, kaido almost oppressed people for change which was really a weird way of doing it i don't know if he was actively thinking that but I do think that he was trying to create a situation on Wano because he knew that Joy Boy would be there in 20 years in order to have Joy Boy come back to fight him, possibly to the death that he was hoping for. And I think that in itself is a really profound and interesting way to look at a fighter rather than just, you know, the big meathead that just swings a club. Um, so I, I think that that was done really well. You know, this is weird, too. Like, well, I was surprised that Kaido never broke his club, or, like, Luffy broke it, or whatever. So I'm expecting him that had to still happen at some point. Maybe that's a symbolism thing. Uh, you know, that last hit Luffy did, boy, he, like, blasted him into the ground. And then Momo, of course, you know, getting his moment to shine, too, and moves the, and does the clouds over. I think it would have been cool, though, cooler if he actually used the strength of his dragon with some of the clouds like Odin did, you know, lifting the pot, you know, lifting the scabbards over his head. I think that would have been really cool, but that didn't happen. Um, yeah, so the end, the end of the arc, I think this is the end of the arc, and, you know, everyone else is defeated, and they're finally there, finally resting, and, you know, we, we got a break next week, and I, I don't really know if the warships are still a thing, if Zanisha is going to take him out, because otherwise, what was the point of Zanisha just there to, you know, narrate and be a plot device, you know, because she didn't put the fire out in Wano. I mean, what 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 is her role at this point? To bring the Minx? I, I, I don't know. Um, there's so much things in the air. We still don't know, like, what, like, the CP0 agent left, which is strange because he didn't collect his buddy Maha. I guess Maha is dead. Uh, he didn't even, like, report if that other guy that Kaido killed was dead, but I guess he assumed that. Uh, is that guy dead? I hope, sure hope so. Is Orochi's burning head still alive? Let's hope not, but I highly doubt it in a, a shonen jump thing like that. You know, is Kondro dead? You know, what what's going to happen with the scabbards? Are the scabbards dead? Did Ashura Doji blow up? Last we saw him, he exploded. So, is is he still exploded? <laughs> um, honestly, I, I only see Ino Arashi and Nekomamushi, like, really seem to be candidates to survive. And then, obviously, Kawamatsu, because he hasn't done shit. Um, Dendro is apparently fine. Um, it, I, there's so many questions. Just absolutely just infinite questions. Um, you know, what's going to happen with Kaido and Big Mom? Are they going to be arrested again? Are they going to go their own ways? Are, are some of the Toby Ropo going to be arrested? Or are they, you know, like, I would love if Ulti and Page want to join Kid's crew. Um, he needs some help. <laughs> um, you know, is somebody going to join Law's crew? You know, what's going to, where's the road Poneglyph? Where's the rest of the Poneglyphs? Are they still going to have a celebration if Luffy and Zoro are knocked out? You know, I don't know. I don't know, but this was a really good chapter, especially this week. Um, I found out that I have COVID, um, and I was trying to prevent that for two years because 
I don't have the greatest immune system and I, you know, it's, it, I usually get sick for a really long time. So I really didn't want that to happen. So, uh, just haven't really been feeling that great the last couple, last month or so. So yeah, <laughs> so this chapter really did, uh, mean a lot to me and it's been four long years that this arc has been going on. And I have been reading it since Wano's been caught up. Uh, I caught up with One Piece when, when Wano started, so it felt really weird and kind of special to finally see a villain get taken out like this, uh, even if it was kind of a little bit disappointing. So anyways, uh, I hope you like my rambling, and uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time. Bye.